Hello everybody, Thomas here. If you're listening to this, you probably know who I am or have stumbled upon this. So what's going to happen today is we're going to draw some stuff um, as soon as I get this charcoal dust off everything I own. Uh, that being said, whatever, we're just going to roll with it because today we are just going to be doing some doodling. Um, tools of the trade I use. I use uh, Doc Martin's Bombay India ink. Glass pen is my weapon of choice. It needs to be cleaned, but hey, I'm just going to roll with it as it is. So, this is a quick and dirty thing because I don't have a lot of time today. And I want to show you how this works. Or how I make it work. If anybody tells you what art is or art is not, they're full of crap. Uh, that being said, I'm about to tell you what art is, and art is what you make of it. It is living, breathing, you know, it's what you do. So, yeah. That being said, let's get painting. Or inking, I guess, this case maybe Painting, inking, whatever you want to call it. So, first thing we're going to do is decide what we want to draw. I haven't decided yet, so we're going to draw some fantasy creature. Because I like fantasy creatures. And uh, I hope you do too, because that's what we're doing. So, you'll see I have a lot of ink on my hands. Because I'm sloppy. That's, uh, that's how it is. I have fun. I have to get my hands in it. That being said, we're going to start with purple. I tend not to use black in my drawings except to do outlines, simply because the black is very dark. That sounds stupid when you say it like that, but um, the purple you can mix with colors. If you mix black with anything else, it tends to just become black because the black is very invasive, much like the white pigmentation in the same ink uh, is very thick for covering. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're gonna draw something here. We're going to draw, I don't know, we're just going to draw it. So here we're going to go. We're going to go, um, whoop, there, it's a line. Let's get going, right? How's that line look? Can you see that line clearly? Okay, good. I hope so. We'll go there. We'll pull another one down here like that. And, uh, right. So we got a couple lines. And we're going to pull another one in like that. Another one in like that. So, this is the basic shape of an eyeball for a fantasy creature that I'm drawing currently with you right now as you watch. So, there we go. Slide that aside. Don't forget that's open. That will ruin your day if you do. We're going to mix in some turquoise here. I got these inks from Art Shack in Moncton, New Brunswick. Shameless plug. Uh, they're pretty cool there. You see Daniel though. Daniel, Daniel there. Tell him I said hello. So, moving along. We're just going to uh, make a mess. Yeah. I like messes. Messes are the precursor to excellence. Because nothing good ever starts clean. It always starts with a chaotic idea, followed by some sort of execution and refinement. We learn from our mistakes. Not that I make mistakes in art, because art is what you make it. And that is really the case. All right, so we got a bunch of lines here, right? Now you're probably thinking, Tom, that sure is an ugly bunch of lines. And I'm like, yep, it sure is. They're like, Tom, how is that an eyeball for a fantasy creature? And I'm like, that's a good question. Thank you, audience, for asking. So I'm going to grab some of my random amounts. I keep toilet paper and, and uh, paper towel. The thing is about the paper towel is it tends to lift very roughly. And it leaves things looking kind of like uh, burlap weave. Or if I do this, boom, look at that. You can, oh, that almost never happens like that. There we go. Uh, you can see that we have the sort of striking blue and the purple right there. And if I swear at my cats at any point, please forgive me. They are kittens and they like to chew on my toes a lot. So we got that. That's cool. We're gonna use a lot of cool colors in this, I think. I'm gonna give this thing a short little beak. Whoop. Whoop. There we go. Also, if you hear what sounds like thundering elephants in the background, that is also my cats. They are playful, we'll say. But that's okay, they're kitties. So, you get kind of a bird looking thing here. That's pretty cool. All right. Throw that down. We're going to grab some of this here turquoise. Shake it up. I like to shake my inks because I do not like to have the separation in them. 
Now this probably just looks like a big old hot mess. Mostly because it's largely what it is at this point. There we go. You'll see me check the undersides to make sure I'm not causing any transference to take my ink with the previous kind of ink that I just used. Uh, now small lines, if you try to lift them the way I am, this will happen. They will all they will explode outwards. Um, if you lift just small pieces like this, these let soak in and lift, um, you will get more color variation. Variation is important. You are not painting your neighbor's fence. Um, ow, cat. That being said, there we go. You can lift it a little bit or a lot. Gives you more fine control. Or you can just lift the whole thing at once. In this case, we're gonna we're just gonna play around because that's what we're doing. You'll notice the longer you let the ink sit, the darker it gets. Uh, there's no set time frame for that. If that's how you're gonna do this, it's just a matter of practice, trial and error. Like most things in life. So we have a kind of a weird little round beak. I don't know if I really like that too much, but we can work with that. Uh, we got kind of a weird face. Kind of looks like a crazy blue jay I guess if your blue jay was on LSD uh, but that being said let's, uh, let's bring this down give him a little bit of a puffy chest like that there we go and uh, you know what we'll give him some crazy head feathers because clearly this is not really a blue jay and my not really a blue jay deserves some crazy head feathers now you saw me show you my glass pen earlier and I haven't actually used it reason being is I tend to use it for stuff like this where I'm just pulling out very faint lines or not faint very sharp lines because if you touch this to the paper too sharply you will score the paper and it will leave scratch marks if you lift it and where I knew I was going to be lifting a lot of the other stuff I just wanted to avoid that altogether but this, this will be fine because this is sort of feathery, exactly what we're, we're, we're talking about, that we want those fine, sharp lines. Because you get fine lines and you get sharp lines, or sharp, fine lines, and you get the more watercolory looking lines with this ink, I find. Also, don't put your hand in the ink or you'll do that. Yeah, it's a thing. So, whatever. Just sort of pull that out like that. There we go. And that makes a great sound if you like that sound. Some people hate that sound. It's a sound. It's not exactly, you know, hot beats, but, you know, it'll do. So now we're going to lift uh, this first. So we're going to carefully place that. We're going to smash it down. Remember I said about fine line smudging? Yeah, well they do a little bit, as you can see there. But it kind of adds texture to it, right? You can see the fine little lines that I drug out. And more importantly, where they uh, where they dug in. Let me push this up here a little more. Where they dug in, where the, where the paper was scored by my usage of that, uh, of that pen. There we go. And it's feather. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? And we go up, 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 and it's feather. Now you could just leave that ink there, and it'll uh, it'll darken. And eventually, if there's too much, it'll pool. It won't clean. When you do finally lift it off, if it does lift off, it's tacky. You'll end up with a really super bright spot over where your nice dark ink was. So again. Oh, hello, sweetie. No, sweetie, I can't play right now. Daddy's drawing. Thank you. Um, sorry, cat. So, mm, cat. No, mm, no, sweetie. So, anyways, okay, you can sleep there. Um, moving along. Sorry, cat. Dark ink. Yes. So, if you let it pool too long, or there's too much ink, it'll pool and it'll get really super dark. And then what ends up happening is when you lift it, you'll end up with a section where the sink, the big sink of it was, uh, that is super bright around other dark stuff. And it's a waste of ink and it looks 
it can look okay, you know, but it's it's probably not what you are looking for. So let's draw a wing. He's sitting down, so his wing will be at his side. Like that. Just gonna draw some feather lines, I suppose. Like I said, it's a fantasy bird, right? So we're just gonna we're just gonna go with this. Think of him as a as a bird in your dreams that flies through and is, I don't know, whatever kind of bird dreams you have. Point of the matter is it's clearly not hyper realistic. Kitty. Hey, hey, stop that. He's batting at the other end of my page at the moment. Okay. So, let's, uh, so a little more color in this because you know that that blue is really nice but I'm gonna throw some more of that uh, I'm gonna throw some aqua in here shake this up a little bit now I'm pushing gently on the dabber to release just a little bit of ink so it moves in line with the blue that that'll give us some nice color gradient blending without uh, without too much uh, Now because that's a wing, and that's feathered, I'm going to my pen, I'm going to move through, pull down like that. Cat, get out of my art case. Yes, I love you. Now is not the time, sweetie. And uh, so we're going to, oh my goodness, stop. We're going to keep drawing here. We're going to try to ignore the little kitty as best we can, even though he is super cute. Get out of my art case! Super cute! Yes, I love you too. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! So I'm going to keep drawing here while I'm putting the cat one-handed. Leaning way back now. There we go. I know you have food and water. I already checked. And uh, there we go. And you'll see me drawing over lines that uh, didn't seem to be doing anything, but that is again scoring the paper to give that that feathered look that you'll see when I lift that in just a moment. All right. So we're gonna lift this bad boy. You'll see how bright those colors are. There we go. And lift a little extra ink. So it's a little, maybe a little dark there. We'll have to let that dry before putting more ink on that, though. So you can see that it's not always about the shapes that you do make because they don't need to be perfect. They need to be suggestive. They need to be evocative. They need to they need to make someone look at it and go, "I know what that is. That's cool." Without going, what the hell is that? I guess it looks like that. Um, you have to, in my opinion, I should say, because again, I'm not gonna tell you what art is or isn't because that is, in my opinion, the wrong way to look at it. It is, yes, kitty, I love you. It's a matter of expression and just doing it for yourself. What are you clawing at over there? I'd like to point out that my kitten was born on Good Friday. He's very little still. And I do have two kitties. Not that you came here to listen to my cats, but I have a boy kitty and a girl kitty. They're very good. Except when they're not. But hey, hashtag cat life, right? All right. Yes, 
Yes, I will play with you in just a minute, sweetie. I love you, honey. All right, so we're going to drop some blue onto this already existing ink. Why are we going to do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. I sure you would if I was actually streaming this instead of recording it. Now, bubbles. Let's talk about bubbles. Bubbles piss me off. So what I do is I clean my brush. I go, fuck, fuck, fuck. When I say brush, I mean my glass pan. I go, fuck, 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 fuck. But after you've pucked a couple of them and you get a little bit of ink on the end, you have to wipe it off or you won't be able to pop the other ones. You can just drag the bubbles around. So now, what we're going to do here is we're just going to Drag the ink a little. You can see there's blues and greens and hues in there. All right. And this, my video camera does not really do it justice as to how it looks in reality, but that's something I'm still working on. So we're just going to soak that up. go bird oh wait I probably should do that part too there we go there bird bird probably needs an eyeball because it's got a big gaping hole I know I said that was the eye we never actually put one in so we're gonna pull that closer here I'm gonna clean that off now the rest of its blues and greens a little bit of purple I feel like to make this really striking, we need to change the color of the eye. Because you know, all birds have bright orange eyeballs, right? Right, that's the thing, yeah? Guy told me that once. No? Okay. All right. And we'll throw in a little bit of yellow onto that orange. Just a little bit. Now we're going to pull from the yellow out to the orange. Always pull from the lighter color to the darker color. Orange being darker than yellow in some strange world. Uh, because otherwise what will happen is, is the orange will swallow all of it like it just did because I went the wrong way once. And you will end up with no yellow and a lot of orange. Or a lot of darker color I should say. Let's keep it... Uh, Technical as it were. So that sure is a bright orange eyeball. We're just gonna grab a little bit of it to go along the the eyelid there, like cheap bird mascara or eyeliner, I guess. Excuse me. I generally will wear a lot of makeup, so excuse me if my terms are incorrect. Um, yeah, we got to go boop, boop, and that gives us a gradient, which I just destroyed by dragging charcoal from that paper over it, because there's charcoal on that one. That's fine. That is fine. It's, n it's not about making a picture perfect, realistic. It's, it's about having fun, because if you're not having fun, like many things in life, you're not doing it right. It's about the only time you can do it wrong. this purple to outline this. We're going to draw some fast straight lines here to try to give it the illusion of some sort of shading as if we were using a pen like a standard real normal pen. Okay. Then we're going to grab a clean piece of toilet paper because we saw what happened last time when it wasn't. And we're going to lift. Boop. Because that pulls a lot of that ink off. Though it still leaves a dark color. It's not going to take 12 years to dry. 
Um, and it gives us this weird kind of a, yes, kitty, I'm almost done. I promise. There we go, look. Kitty, kitty, you're right behind me. Hey, sweetie. Are you arting with me? Do you like arting with me? Yeah? Okay. Okay. Yes, I can hear you purring. I'm sure everybody else can too, sweetie. All right. So I'm going to throw a little bit of white on there. Just to uh, give it a little bit of roundness look to it. Oh, ow, ow, kitty, those are claws. Are you? I don't know why you're dying for attention. I played with you all afternoon. Okay. So that didn't turn out as well as I'd like because the back of it wasn't dark enough. But uh, we can work on that. Again, I really want to throw black on it because the black is so dark. It is shockingly dark. Um, so I'm going to go to the violet again. I keep calling it purple. It is violet. Excuse me. And we're going to... Okay, sweetie, if you're going to be on my chair, you can't be clawing at my back. It does not feel good. Thank you. All right. So, put that like that. Maybe darken some of this up a touch, that excess. And we're gonna lift. Yeah, it's really gonna, really should be the black I use, but I'm not gonna, because I'm gonna be a rebel. What I'm gonna do instead, I'm gonna put a white dot here, a white dot there. Pull them out just a little bit. Just a little bit of that violet still on the pen. Like that. A little bit up here. Because again, this isn't trying to be hyper realistic by any stretch. And we're going to go. Uh, it wasn't as dark, it wasn't as bright as I hoped. Okay, maybe I will have to leave a little bit of white on there. Alright, so we're gonna... Draw that like that around. Just to give that eye a little more contrast. Like that. Okay, we're going to leave that now like that. Let that dry like that. We're just going to do a little more uh, feathering here and we'll call that done. We could work out this more. We could darken up the beak. We could add more things in. Hello kitty. But I have some pressing matters that I have to go deal with. So we're just going to add in, now he's licking me, thank you, I'm glad I'm tasty. Um, if you don't know, if you've never had cats, kitten claws, very sharp, they kind of suck. Um, not a lot of damage, but they kind of suck. So. In this case, the white space will give the suggestion of, of other feathers, but these are just the most important ones we're drawing. They are the, the primary feathers, if you will. Because in the reality of it is that you don't, sometimes your imagination is a powerful tool as somebody who looks at something, as well as somebody who makes something. By not having everything colored in and everything flawless and everything photorealistic. You allow people to make up on their own what is in that white space and it leads to creative thought. And a lot of times that is, that is far more powerful than, than any ink or any, uh, any pastel or any charcoal that, that you could use.
because it is by imagination, by mankind's imagination, that this sort of art and this sort of uh, this sort of even the materials were made because someone had an idea, someone had a dream, it made it happen. And I paid five seventy five a bottle for this dream. Don't uh, don't don't do the math. And I got the paper, and we made this happen. It's a beautiful thing. So I'm gonna post this. Uh, I'm gonna scan this and post it soon. And I do hope you enjoyed your time. Thank you very much, and be good to each other.